So whether you are going on a trip or you are a retired traveler or slow traveler like Warren and I, we want to make sure you are not giving away your hard earned money you have saved for your retirement or vacation. So if you don't mind spending more when you travel, you can tune out now because we are here to try and save you money. Today, we're gonna to take our four years of experience traveling internationally and give you a complete guide how to bank abroad. Welcome to our terrace here in Montenegro. This is where we have our home base as we slow travel uh, Europe. At this point, we're traveling for four years uh, with our two dogs, seeing the world. And I think we picked up a lot of uh, a lot of esoteric knowledge along the way. So we're gonna try to enlighten you guys with as much as we can and let you know things that we've seen, experienced, and hopefully it's gonna help you out. So if you're sitting at home right now watching this video, dreaming about early retirement, wondering when you can retire, let me just give a little bit of advice that helped me out. Stop watching ESPN or 90 Day Fiance and invest that time into watching financial shows that are on Bloomberg or CNBC and get to know the stock market and the different stocks out there like you do football players or baseball players and know the different CEOs and know what's going on financially and put your money to work for you. That's the way you're gonna be able to actually get to retire and be sitting here like in Montenegro like we are someday. <laughs> so when we talk today and share our insights on banking and credit cards and how to save on costs, one thing is security. When you're working on your different platforms as you travel around the world or when you're in a particular location, one of the things that's really important to have is a good VPN. So Julie, we are now switching VPNs. Tell us about the VPN service and what and why we are using what we're using and other benefits to it. So we're now going to use and have started using Surfshark because we have found that the other one we were using has limited us a bit too much, especially with our television programs from the United States. And that's a big problem for me. 90 but, days fiance. <laughs> but we use a VPN for a lot of reasons. We, we use it to minimize our public Wi-Fi risk. That's a big deal. You wanna bank while you're on the go, that's, that's truly a big deal. It allows us to watch our US television programs, or if a show is in another country, you can connect up to that country and you can watch it. As I said, I'm a huge fan of 90 Day Fiance and I love to watch it every week. So when you're trying to watch your US show, be sure to engage the VPN. Otherwise, they will detect you're not in the United States and they'll block you stating you're outside the area. Hulu is terrible about this. I forget to engage the VPN and voila, they shut me down and tell me, uh-oh, you're outside the United States. The part that you do then is you just close it out, you close everything out, give it a few minutes, start the VPN back up and then you go back into Hulu. And generally it will reset. And let me say on the VPN that I've been in countries where I've tried to get into certain banking accounts and investing platforms, and it doesn't like the country I'm in, and it won't let me through because I'm in a particular country. I could easily get in without a VPN in some countries. I go to another country and it stops me. So engaging the VPN lets you get that access and you can put the VPN onto your smartphones as well so that you have that uh, security as well when you're traveling. Um, so we have that Surfshark um, link at, at warrenjulietravel.com and our travel resources We uh, do, area. we so do. It's and it's currently, it has an offer of 85% off plus two months free. And it actually is a 30 day money back guarantee and can be used on multiple devices. And you know, we never do ask for any money through Patreon or buy me a coffee, but we just ask you to consider our links for something that you actually need. And if you buy something through our Amazon link on our store, we don't, it doesn't need to be what we have on the store. We'll actually receive a little small commission. Yeah, we, we appreciate uh, when you guys support us, however you support us, um, but we're not here to try to shake you down for nothing. And you know, we try to give you information for free. We're not charging you for special classes and trying to make up schools that um, are not accredited, accredited by anybody but the person giving the school. So we are just giving you our, our knowledge that we've experienced at no cost. So another thing that's very important is to keep your logins accessible. Set a pen code you can actually remember. I use notes on my phone, but 
very discreetly, oftentimes with something that'll prompt my brain to remember passwords and pen codes. Now, just consider emails are not always secure. They get hacked. Don't keep your pen codes sitting around in your email address or in your email um, box. Somebody will break in and that's the first thing they go looking for when they get into your email. So Julie, you're out shopping. We've got cards that are foreign to the nations we're in. What advice do you have to give to people out there shopping with their cards? You always select the local currency. You don't use the US dollar, which is my local currency in the United States. Could be the British pound, could be the Australian dollar, or Canadian dollar, whatever. For example, you're in a Lidl grocery market in Spain, which uses the Euro. Don't opt to pay in US dollars, pay in Euros. It's much less expensive if you're using the cards we're recommending. So let's talk ATMs. Even the bank ATMs are here to scam you. We went to a bank that we were going to for a very long time that we didn't have to pay a fee for to go to the ATM. And we went there yesterday, and I'm going to show you the screen of what it looked like on these conversions. They tried to confuse the tourist or the traveler to accept an outrageous exchange rate by using their ATM. Do not fall for it. So when you go to the ATM, you, um, I did a pretend 200 euro takeout, and had I accepted the rate of that local bank, it would have been $240.76 for that 200 euros to be taken out. I declined that rate. I pressed the decline button. And then oftentimes at banks, they will then tell you, are you sure we can't guarantee you what your rate will be as though they're doing you a favor? Still decline, hold your ground, go on to the next, next page and get your money declining the rate. What we ended up spending instead of $240.76 was an actual $213.16. So we actually saved, what, $27 plus by declining the local bank and going with the bank rate conversion that we have from our ATM cards. So if you want to increase the cost of your trip by 10 to 12%, opt for the bank conversion. <laughs> yes, that's just throwing money away. As he mentioned, if possible, always use ATMs at actual banks, not the kiosk like Eurostar and some of those. Those will cost you a lot more money. When we started our travels, we had the Capital One 360 uh, ATM card that we had from our Capital One 360 uh, bank, which has been fantastic. It, there's no foreign transaction fees or conversion fees. And when we use an ATM, if the ATM's not charging us a fee at the local location, it's we, we don't have any kind of extra cost. So we've always been able to find an ATM that wasn't going to charge us a fee. However, things have changed here in Montenegro recently that the banks that weren't charging fees are. And having a card that will help you absorb these ATM fees is really beneficial. So while we have enjoyed Capital One 360 and we don't have anything negative to say, we're actually converting to going the way that so many travelers are. And that's gonna be using a Schwab uh, checking account and banking account now because they will reimburse you for those ATM fees. So again, when I took you through the ATM and said, don't do these, these bank conversions, you may still get hosed if you have the wrong card with that 499 euro fee from that ATM. So Schwab is kind enough to absorb that for you. So if you're gonna be uh, a savvy traveler, that's probably the best ATM card to, uh, to go with, best uh, checking card to go with, and that's what we recommend. And we do have a link to sign up on that. No, we do not. <laughs> yeah, so see, just free advice. So our next tip is about getting the WISE app, the physical card, and the digital card. We have a link for WISE on our website at warrenjulietravel.com under travel resources. This is a bank account that lets you send, spend, and receive money worldwide. You can spend with your debit card, receive money, and transfer money to other people. 
What WISE offers is a cheaper, easier, and faster solution. You can easily send this money directly from within the app just by using their email address if they are already using WISE. If not, you will need their banking information. Their fees at WISE are extremely low. When we purchase our vehicle using WISE, I move money from our traditional checking account into WISE, converted it into euros, and simply send it to the seller's account. We've also paid for the work we did with our Polish attorney and translation services for a residency application through WISE and our Bulgarian attorney for our car insurance. When you use the card to withdraw money from your account, you will get a notification on your phone. This is for your safety. It'll show you where the transaction took place and how much was withdrawn. Depending on where you live, you may be eligible to earn interest on the money you keep in WISE. The rates are 2.29% on euros, 4.85% on US dollars. For those of you in the UK who are using Monzo, it is very similar to the WISE account. For large sums of money, we recommend checking out Smart Currency Exchange in London. They do not charge fees for monies transferred over 5,000 British pounds. They will beat most bank rates due to the low overhead, and they will have the money transferred in 24 to 48 hours in most cases. So one of the best credit cards that we have ever had is the Chase Sapphire card. We used it for years before leaving the United States, and it has really worked out so well for us abroad because there are no transaction fees for foreign currency. If you sign up through our link, you'll receive 60,000 bonus points if you're approved. We'll get a small commission. It's saved us lots of money, and it's a Visa card, which is accepted in most places. We get points for everything we purchase through this card. We've been able to use these points to pay the small annual membership fee and still have cash back. We never carry a balance on our credit cards. We pay it off every two to three weeks, letting this card actually give us money, not cost us interest. Let's be clear, when Julie mentioned the foreign transaction fees, there's also no foreign conversion fees. So you're getting the pretty much the regular rate, market rate for your euro or dollar conversion um, or whatever the currency may be and not paying some sort of upcharge. So we have successfully opened a bank account in Montenegro, but that was back in 2016. So unfortunately, countries are becoming much more difficult unless you have residency in their country to open a bank account. Before leaving the United States, make sure you have all your documents in order, from your birth certificates, to your marriage certificates, to social security cards, have it all with you. You'll need some of these things if you wanna apply for a residency in a country or a bank account in a foreign country. We bought our house initially in 2016 and at that time, banking was not nearly as difficult as it is now. So that home was in the old town of Couture here in Montenegro. And just for those of you first time watching, Montenegro is a fabulous country. And I encourage you to go look at our playlist on Montenegro and see why we own a home here. Yes, we travel all over, the, all over Europe, all over the world, but this is our home base. So we're here quite often and um, it's worth being here outside of the Schengen. So check us out. Um, so we s opened up two accounts initially when we came to Montenegro. One was set up for US dollars and one was set up for euros. So if we had transferred euros from the United States and bought the euros at our bank in America and transferred it over here to Europe, it was going to cost a fortune more, about 3% more for us to buy the euros in the US and transfer euros to Europe. It made sense for us to transfer dollars from our US bank to our Montenegro bank. And you can use this for other banks around the world and other countries. Opening up a local account in that currency, you'll probably get a better conversion rate once those dollars are in that bank account. So when we transfer the dollars to our Montenegro bank account and then converted those to euros, we took a much smaller hit on that conversion. Um, again, about 3% saved. Yes, which, which was wonderful. As most of you know that are following us, we sold our home in the old town of Couture and we bought this home here where we overlooked the uh, Bay of Couture. Um, we enjoy our new home, but we had to 
take money from a guy from Australia transferring monies in. We had to transfer other monies from the United States over to our home uh, account here in, in our local bank. And banking here has become much more restrictive. The U.S. government has their hands all over everybody's banking system. And if you're a U.S. citizen, it could be even more difficult because of all of the different compliance regulations everybody is having to uh, work with from the United States. So when we transferred um, our money over to our local bank this time, it was not as easy as last time. They wanted to know where the money came from and you know, trying to explain that this came from investments or that this money came from dividends and savings. It seemed to be a mind-blowing concept that we would have money that we have saved and then transferring over and that we don't have regular jobs. They wanted to know who an employer was. So we had to jump through all these hurdles to get our own money transferred over here. Then our buyer of our property decided he was gonna do a little five euro transfer to make sure everything went smoothly. We had to spend hours upon hours to get everything squared away on getting that five euros cleared so we can tell him it's all good. We had to go back and forth to the bank, explain where this money's coming from, then when he sent the larger sum, that was another 15, 20 hour process that we spent trying to get this money squared away and having to show documents and show that monies came from legitimate sources. And then this guy, uh, John, if you're watching, you tortured us. We still had him owing us several hundred euros at the end. And instead of just coming and giving us money when he was here, he said, He's transferring it all through the bank so that every everything's out of trail. But that was a pain for us. That was like another 12 hours wasted <laughs> going back and forth and trying to get that money released. So it has become a lot more problematic at transferring money, at least into Montenegro. So our neighbor just bought his home and he used smart currency exchange from the UK. And apparently you can be other nationalities, so this can work for Americans as well. Um, and this might be the smoothest way because if you can't open a bank account right now in Montenegro, if you're not a resident and it's really hard, some banks you can get into if you know the right people, an attorney can help you out. But this smart currency exchange apparently acts like an escrow. And so for those of you that are not familiar, it's a holding account. So you can take your money from your dollars or your, your currency and wherever you're coming from, put it into this smart currency exchange and then they will release that money to the bank account waiting to receive it and that way you don't have to go and open up another bank account and and transfer from that bank account so it's a smoother process potentially yes. than trying to open up a bank of your own in each country that you're trying to buy property in so again no money gets made from us plugging this company but uh, smart currency exchange maybe the way to handle issues in the in the future for transferring large sums it was still a headache for him don't get me wrong <laughs> but um it's it's sounds like maybe it's a little bit smoother than trying to go bank to bank correct and they will lock the uh interest rate in for a period of time especially for a house purchase so if you open a foreign bank account as an American citizen, be aware you'll have to file the FBAR if you hold more than 10,000 US dollars in the account during the calendar year. You may have started off with 9,500 in the beginning of the year, but because of exchange rates, it might now be $10,200 in the account. There is a potential fine if you don't file the FBAR and penalties can be as high as $10,000 a year for filing errors or not knowing you had to file. This report has to be filed with FENCEN, which is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Yeah, so you already feel like you're doing something wrong when you go into your local bank and ask for money, by the way, like when we go to our local bank here in Montenegro and try to take out 1500 euros they want to know why we're taking it out well we're doing home improvements um so then you have to do a filing for this f bar and you know it, it just always feels like you're doing something wrong even when you're doing everything right uh, so if you can keep under 10,000 or go without having to open up a foreign account that's all <laughs> all the better but um you know it, it there is a convenience to having a local bank just try to stay underneath that 10,000 because of all of our home changing with buying and selling and 
they did do renovations. We were definitely over the 10,000 this year and we had to do an F bar. Yes, and a tip that we have for you is before you leave your home country, notify your home bank of your travel plans. This will prevent your card from being blocked for suspicious activity. So make sure you set up your online banking and download any necessary apps for managing your accounts on the go. We cannot tell you how many times we've had a fraud alert hit our phone from a bank account. We purchased a television here in Montenegro and our account blocked it immediately. Electronic stores are flagged a lot. We had to wait to get a text from our bank for us to approve the transaction and then it had to be rerun again. We don't any longer have to inform our bank of our travels because they are familiar with our travel patterns. We've been doing it for four years. If you're a frequent traveler, you'll not be flagged as often because they'll look at the patterns of your lifestyle, which is of course nine times out of 10 a good thing because they're looking out for you, but it's really an inconvenience when you're standing there trying to purchase something and you feel like a criminal. Yeah, and actually there was a time we were lucky that um, somebody was trying to buy plane tickets in a part of the world that we weren't in and with an airline that we weren't um, using, but somehow we were notified that there was a uh, an airline ticket purchase going on. We were able to stop that, but um, you know we travel a lot, so we were lucky that, uh, that, that somehow the AI generated knowledge of our patterns said that this doesn't seem right. So let's talk health insurance when you're traveling you know, have your credit card. You can pay out of pocket for a lot of medical care when you're in different places. Uh, medical care in so many countries is very, very inexpensive. And we typically pay out of pocket even though we have medical insurance because we carry a $2,500 deductible on us and a million dollar cap in coverage. And it costs us $240 uh, a month on average for us to have this coverage, more or less for catastrophic reasons. And so, I would encourage you to look at the medical programs when you're traveling, but most of the time it's going to be easy to cover out of pocket. But you can go to our website, warrenjulietravel.com, check out our health insurance uh, area there. I actually am an agent from the United States. I, I've got uh, several companies in there that I represent. We use a program that uh, is primarily an indemnity, so we have to pay first and then we'll get reimbursed. Most of the programs are sim similar to that for international coverage, but uh, check that out. And if you have questions on it, you can email me at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com. And I do get a commission as an agent. And for that, I would thank you. And if you don't use our links, I don't get a commission. So, you know, again, stuff we do is at no cost. So if you want to support us by going through our website, hitting some links and purchasing health insurance or travel insurance through us, that's that's a great thing for us and we appreciate you. So now as a reminder, Julie and I have been traveling for four years. We we're picking up a lot of esoteric knowledge along the way. We share this for free. You don't need to be a Patreon and you don't need to give us any money. We share for free in our videos. We hope you're gonna subscribe and check them out. Look at some of our playlists. Maybe look at the How to Be a Nomad playlist. It has a lot of information, tells you about how we have our car because we actually had to do stuff with buying our car and transferring monies to but check these things out and if you do want to support us watch a commercial on YouTube on one of our videos uh, go check out our website at warrenjulietravel.com and if you want to have contact with us on a more regular basis or see what's going on live we have a Facebook group a, of growing nomads and expats and people that want to become nomads and expats on Facebook. Just look for Warren Julie Travel. You'll find us on there. So we hope that this was enlightening. Please don't forget to subscribe. Give the video a like. Share with somebody that you think might benefit from the knowledge that's that we're putting in here. And if you have other ideas of value that may benefit our viewers, go down to the comments section and add some comments. And if you've got something to teach us that we are not talking about, put that down in the comments. We're interested to learn new things. This is a crazy world we live in. It's a very esoteric world of slow travel and dealing with finances and financials as we go from country to country. And at this point, I'm at uh, 47 countries and Julie's 45 countries that we've crossed borders in and have to deal with things in. But we don't know it all, but we try to show you what we do know. 
So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao.